San Antonio is one of the most popular destination spots in the state of Texas, drawing over 26 million visitors a year. Famous for its strong influence of Mexican culture, historical landmarks, and its popular river walk. Welcome to the great state of Texas. This is Family Travel, and I'm Colleen Kelly. We're coming to you from San Antonio, one of America's favorite cities. On this family getaway, we'll be catching up on our American history at the Alamo. The Alamo is very sacred and symbolic to us Texans. Strolling the river walk, taking in the sights at an authentic Mexican market, getting up close and personal with some animals. This is a good thing for our environment. And indulging in a true Texas pastime. My name is Colleen Kelly, and when I was single, I lived abroad and traveled the world. Then I became a parent and wondered, how would I ever travel again? So I set out to find a new way to travel and get back to exploring the world family style. I'm here to guide you on how to get the most out of your family vacation. Pack your bags and join me, Colleen Kelly. We're going on vacation. Funding provided by... Parents say travel is educational. Kids just think it's fun. It's gotten me up close to dinosaurs, sharks, even real rockets. And that's pretty awesome. Family travel equals family fun. City Pass. To set the stage for any trip, I recommend starting off with an overview of the city's history and culture. The San Antonio region was discovered by Spanish explorer Alvar Nunez Cabeza de Vaca in the 1500s. In 1661, Spanish missionaries named the area after St. Anthony, which is why it's known today as San Antonio. These explorers knew a thing or two about picking a vacation destination. One of the best things about San Antonio is that there are over 300 sunny days a year. Oh look! Another sunny day. Making this a destination hotspot almost all year round. It's a city rich with history and culture, known for its authentic food and traditional architecture. I found the perfect opportunity to sneak in a little education on this vacation with Dr. Winders, the curator of the Alamo. The last time I was here, I didn't learn about the history of the Alamo. Why is this so important to the city of San Antonio? Well, the Alamo really gives us our identity. When tourists come here, they go to the Riverwalk, they go to some of the theme parks that are around, but everybody wants to come to the Alamo. Yeah. And so it's really critical for people to come to the Alamo so they can say they were here. And they always say, what's the big saying? Remember the Alamo. That's what I always hear, but I have no idea what that means. Well, remember the Alamo is a famous historical slogan. And it comes from the battle in 1836 where the Texan rebels are fighting against the Mexican government. So although this doesn't look like a battlefield, this was a battlefield in 1836. And the Texans are defeated, but it's one of those situations where out of defeat comes victory. After the unforgettable battle at the Alamo, Texans were inspired to join the Texan army and revenge Mexican Army General Santa Ana. After defeating the Mexican army at the Battle of San Jacinto, Texas became its own country. Later, in 1846, Texas was annexed by the United States, becoming the 28th state to join the Union. Today, this 300-year-old mission is a museum, and visitors can explore this historical place for free. While doing some routine cleaning, they uncovered what they refer to as historical graffiti. We are always finding things. That's one of the things that people think is, we must know everything about the Alamo and we don't. And so as a structure, as we clean and we do maintenance and things like that, we're always finding things. Wow. And this was recently discovered, this right here? Well, there's some inside that is recently discovered. We've known about this for a little while, but if you look, there's some initials here. There's a J.B., J. Beck, and then above it there's a D and a C, David Crockett. Oh my gosh, no way. Oh, it really does. Somebody else could have carved his name at some point, but uh, if you want to come and see where the name David Crockett is yes. on the Alamo, it's right here. That is cool. So who is David Crockett, you might ask? He was an all-American frontiersman who died at the Alamo. Going to historic landmarks brings history alive for children. It takes their learning beyond the classroom. I asked some visitors why they chose to come to the Alamo to start off their visit to San Antonio. Probably the history. I mean, 
we really like the history part of San Antonio. You know, the end of our Texas independence is is right here. So his parents do like the history, and as a, as a mom and dad, do you like the fact that he's learning too? Right. He ne he needs to learn the history, not only at school and school books, but go experience the you know where it actually took place at. Yeah, there's nothing like being at a place. Is my opinion. Yeah. You know, when you travel a place and you actually see it, that's when you really learn about it. Yep. Oh, and good. Bless their Sea World, so. <laughs> that's that's yeah. the part he's looking for. Right, makes the history with a little bit of kids' stuff. <laughs> that's always good. The best parents are happy, and the kids are happy. This family joined me on our next adventure to learn more about the city's mysterious past. Some say the Alamo is filled with spirits. Maybe that's why San Antonio is considered one of the most haunted cities in America. And what better way to enjoy this spooky city than with a ghost tour, popular with teenagers and adults, though it might be too much for little ones. Most ghost tours include a stop at the Alamo, and you can almost feel the presence of the spirits. We're gonna start right here at the infamous and beautiful Alamo. The Alamo is very sacred and symbolic to us Texans for it reminds us of the cost of freedom. When Santa Ana and his army actually sent in a group of people to destroy the Alamo so that us Texans would not be able to use it as a symbol of freedom and sacrifice. So when they approached the Alamo, they claimed that they saw six men standing guard in front of this Alamo with flaming swords. And as they drew closer, those men cowered in fear because they cried in unison, depart, touch not these walls. Do you like coming here as a family? Yes. Yeah? What do you like most about San Antonio? I like the view. I also like that it's a living nightmare. The living nightmare, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> what is that? All the history and everything. Oh, so you're okay. <laughs> Boys like this stuff, though. That's what you like, yes. right? So you like yes. the fact that it's haunted, huh? Mm. Yeah, that's kind pretty of a good cool. thing. I'm not sure how I feel about it being haunted, but I think I could do it. I'm pretty good with us, right? What we've learned today just seems to have just brought out the history. Actually, feeling like you're just kind of living it as it was presented here was really great oh. and very informative. So is this a good place to travel as a grandparent with your Yes, it is. Lots of history, entertainment, just about everything that you could want could be, you know, you could indulge in it here. The tour also included stops at the Emily Morgan Hotel and the Menger Hotel, thought to be some of the most haunted hotels in the city. From the deep-rooted history of the Alamo, we now head to the Riverwalk, located one story beneath street level along the banks of the San Antonio River. From outdoor sculptures to artwork to restaurants for the whole family, it's all right here on the Riverwalk. No other city in Texas reflects the state's Spanish and Mexican heritage better than San Antonio, especially along the Riverwalk. One of the best ways to experience the beauty of the Riverwalk is by boat. A boat ride will wind your family along the riverbanks, revealing public art projects such as tile mosaic murals. And if you have a budding artist in the family, she is sure to be inspired. The Hispanic culture doesn't just influence the art scene, it also inspires local cuisine, especially Tex-Mex. San Antonio is all about good food, and there's plenty of restaurants here on the Riverwalk. Vacations are the perfect opportunity to introduce kids to new foods. And what better way to discover local flavor than with a local dad, like San Antonio native Steve. So what is Tex-Mex exactly? It's a uh, blend of uh, Mexican food and Texas food, or foods that are indigenous to Texas, hence the uh, word Tex-Mex. Oh, Tex-Mex, and now I get it. Chips, salsa, and homemade guacamole are some Tex-Mex favorites. The key to delicious Tex-Mex is using fresh ingredients that are locally sourced. The result? Creative appetizers, seafood dishes, and great steaks. Ooh, seafood in Texas. This yes, is beautiful. Yes, ma'am. From the Gulf Coast. Seafood. Oh, you're kidding. Wow. Yeah. That's gorgeous. Oh, I'm so excited. Look at the beef. Yes, I look That's... like I'm the lucky one. It looks like we're both lucky, but... Can I try a little bit of yours? Please. Okay. You don't mind, right? No, you're I don't dad, mind. You're dad, right? 
Actually, speaking would of Would you like dads, me to cut your food since I'm a dad? <laughs> yeah. I can cut your steak for you. Yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> How is the food for the kids in San Antonio? Food is fantastic. I mean, all the restaurants down here are definitely kid friendly. That's what's so great about travel is you expose kids to new food and then they try new things and, you know, throw a little french fries so they're happy, but otherwise... That's, uh, a, that's a selling point. <laughs> you gotta sell it somehow. Everything is bigger in Texas. Consider sharing a few entrees. You'll get a variety of tastings and more bang for your buck. After a delicious and entertaining lunch with my new friend Steve, I decided to head down Commerce Street to find this city's true Mexican roots. This market, known by the locals as El Mercado, or Market Square, is the largest Mexican market outside of Mexico. All day long, this market is filled with activity, from music to shows with kids and plenty of people watching. I just found some sombreros for my children. How cute is this? Two little sombreros, I'm buying them. You'll find plenty of great souvenir ideas for friends and family. You make, you hand make all Yes, all kids, I make it right now here. Oh, you're kidding. Yes, ma'am. Oh, red for us on the kitchen. Wow, all handmade. This is one thing that's really cool about the market oh. is they have homemade things you can buy here and you can't get them anywhere else. That's beautiful. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much. Give the kids a set amount to spend on souvenirs. It'll help them learn how to budget and be more selective. So, we've listened to some music, done a little shopping, and now it's time to pop in around the corner for some traditional Mexican pastries. Ooh, it smells so good. As we've come to discover, San Antonio is heavily influenced by its colorful Spanish and Mexican heritage. And the panderias, which are traditional Mexican bakeries, are no exception. I met a family at the bakery who made this their very first stop in San Antonio. I just ran into some folks from Chicago. You're from Chicago? Yeah, Chicago and Dario. And That's what right. do you think of San Antonio? Yeah. I love the architecture. Pretty cool. The food's great. I mean, we've been, we're here at Meteor and the food is fantastic. <laughs> So do you think this is a great place for families? How do you feel about this place for families? Yeah, so we far, really, so good. It was recommended from to us right off the plane, and we're really glad that we came here. We're just, uh, it's so festive, and you know, the mariachi band and food is delicious. This panderia has been a staple in San Antonio since 1957. Each morning, the baker prepares pastries that range anywhere from ham-stuffed bread to candied sweet potatoes, typically hitting the three main types of Mexican pastries, savory, sweet, and pastry puff. You can't beat Mexican pastries, sweet treats for kids of all ages. Next on our agenda, we head west of downtown to one of the world's largest marine life adventure parks. SeaWorld has something for everyone. Water features, roller coasters, and marine life shows. Families can go behind the scenes to learn in depth about animals and the environment. These animal encounters are very popular. To save a spot, sign up ahead of time online. Today, we chose the penguin encounter. There are two ways to experience the penguin encounter. The first is a behind the scenes tour in a classroom type setting. You can learn about their grooming habits, social behavior, and the penguin diet. This also gets fed out to all the animals here that we have. Um, and also one sneaky thing that we do every single day is make sure that all of our birds get their vitamins. Now we don't walk around with bills and hand it that way. We actually are a little sneaky here. We actually take that vitamin and stick it right into the gill slit of the fish. The Penguin Encounter is a one hour immersion program in the penguin's environment. Kids must be at least seven years old to participate and need to be accompanied by a paid adult. It turns from hot to cold as we enter the Arctic Circle. As you enter the chilly world of penguins, you can discover more than 100 different types, including the king penguin with his golden highlights. Penguin Encounter is one of the most popular attractions at SeaWorld, and they're pretty darn cute too. <laughs> At this up close and personal experience with these cute little creatures, you'll get a chance to learn about their habitat and how to safely interact with them. 
The experience is so personal that it makes a lasting impression not soon to be forgotten. And if it's too cold to hang out with the penguins, you can meet other creatures at SeaWorld. You can pet a furry lemur, hug a slippery snake, or even feed the dolphins. Throughout the park, there are opportunities to learn more about the environment, animals, and their behaviors. After the lemur show, I chatted with a mom and her son about what they enjoy. So what did you think of the show? I thought it was awesome. <laughs> it was really cool. There's, it's amazing to be able to see, see stuff like that. You never get to see every day. Yeah. What did you think it was like for the kids to learn kind of a hands-on thing? Oh, they love it. They, they really get a lot, about, a lot out of it. We get home and they talk nonstop about the animals. Uh, what, Daniel, what did you think of the show? Uh, we, uh, with turtles. You like the turtles here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what's your other favorite animal? Um, so lemurs. So lemurs. lemurs. <laughs> I love the lemurs. Don't they look like stuffed animals? Yep. Yeah. I <laughs> wish we could take one home, don't you? Yep. That'd be fun. <laughs> Though you can't take a lemur home, I did get some insider tips from one of the trainers about how visitors can interact with them. Oh, this is great. I love this. This is so fun. Now, can um, people can people actually pet him? You know, people. we have people get close to this animal. Oh, look at that. <laughs> we have people get close to this animal. Because they're a critically endangered species, it's important that we, we display them in a very, very uh, respectful manner. We get them up close and learn about their conservation, but not necessarily everyone gets a chance to touch them. However, a few families that meet us here at the park, they definitely do. If they're in the right place at the oh, right time. That's what you got to be, right, what, place, yeah. right, right place, right time. And we were in the right place for this special treat. This is very important. You see inside of his poop, see those chunks of fruit? So when he goes to the bathroom, he digests his fruit, but not the seed. So it hits the forest floor like this. Then other animals like roaches come along, they eat all the stuff around the poop, and they fertilize a brand new fruit tree. Fruit tree grows, and what eats the fruit? Lemurs. And then what do lemurs do with the fruit seeds? <laughs> who, eats the, who eats around the poop? Cockroaches. The cockroaches. And then what do the roaches do to the fruit seeds? And the fruit tree grows, and who eats the fruit? Lemurs. It's a big cycle that, we, that these animals are a part of, and so are the roaches. That's why here at SeaWorld, you notice we have different kinds of animals. Every animal here at our park has a purpose. From Look at that, more poop. From the smallest roach to the largest whale at our park. No, no, I don't say ew. I say this is a good thing for our environment. Lemur poop is good. It was a full day at SeaWorld. We got the chance to learn about so many animals, including Arctic penguins and African lemurs. A fun time for any animal lover. San Antonio has so many family-friendly attractions that you can't possibly fit them into one vacation. On this visit, we made sure not to miss Morgan's Wonderland, a theme park made accessible for all. Welcome to Morgan's Wonderland! People come from all over the country for this one-of-a-kind experience. The 25-acre park was designed with a purpose in mind. Morgan's Wonderland is a park of inclusion, where those who have special needs and those who don't can all play together. Ah! Good job, uh, when we first thought of it, we said, how are we going to build a park like this? And what we did is we went and talked to people who had special needs individuals in their family and said, what should we put in this park? So it was really a grassroots approach towards putting all the different 26 amenities that you find at Morgan's Moreland through listening to people and what their desire was. The inspiration of this park came from Gordon Hartman's daughter, Morgan. Morgan is 19 years old. She has uh, special needs from the standpoint of cognitive delay and also some physical special needs. What Morgan has is so inspirational, it's her incredible attitude toward life. Very upbeat, always smiling, always hugging, always waving, always wanting to be a part of something. Gordon wanted to make sure that the park was made for the entire family to enjoy. As we bring children in here of all ages, and adults of, of all ages here, it brings down that barrier to where everyone feels comfortable playing together. And it was through those experiences and the inspiration of Morgan that actually brought about this park. As I walked with Gordon, it struck me that this entire park stemmed from the love of one father for his daughter. Throughout Morgan's Wonderland, you'll see the hard work and planning that went into the design of this unique and all-inclusive family fun park. Gordon and I met a group of people that had traveled all the way from Ohio just to enjoy a day at the park. What do you think of it? I like it. Is it fun? What have you been on so far? I, I, learned, the I learned to drive a car. <laughs> really? You can do that here? 
Car number one, who burns the time. There are not only car rides, but a miniature wharf and a sensory play area that promotes imagination. To finish off my trip to Morgan's Wonderland, I took a spin around the carousel. The carousel is also another popular attraction. Kids and adults of all abilities can ride this ride, and it's so fun. Saturday mornings at the downtown Pearl Farmer's Market is a food lover's dream. At the Farmer's Market, you'll find locally grown organic food to suit any taste bud. They also have food demonstrations to teach you how to turn your purchases into gourmet meals. At the Farmer's Market, I joined up with food enthusiast Heather, who is also a mom. Heather, I love this place. I love that everything's locally sourced here. Tell me a little bit about this place. So this is the Pearl Farmer's Market, and they're open every Saturday. Everything is produced locally within 100 miles, actually, of this area. Wow, from the local farms then. Yes, if they're producing, like, there's homemade ice cream, crepes, all of those ingredients also have to be completely organic and locally sourced. Do kids like to come here? Yes, I think so. Yeah, what do you like to do when you come here? I like to buy the strawberries. Oh, she's healthy too. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's a good answer. Mom's like that answer. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you like to do? Do you like the tastings of things? Yes. Yeah? Do you, and, mm -hmm. and you can buy chicken and waffles too. Together? Yes. Do you eat that together? Uh-huh. Really? Is that good? Yes. I've never heard of that. Wow, there's like foodie experiences yeah. here. Yeah, and all of the, you know, that the chicken is locally sourced from the farmer who has a stand right next to the waffle stand. And so, I mean, it's just the quality and the family and community too. Well, should we go try some food? Yes. All right. The farmer's market has all the essentials of making a great picnic. A nice alternative for trying local food. I didn't know you could eat a honeycomb. You can. All and these the things honey, are yeah. in San Antonio. I might even try some chicken and waffles. While at the farmer's market, we bumped into a family that shared their vacation experience. Other teenagers, where would you take them? Downtown to the Riverwalk and do all the Riverwalk things like the Ripley Museum, the Wax Museum. And what about you, San Antonio? What do you think is great for teenagers? In our family, we're all history buffs, so we really like going down to the Alamo. We can make a day of it, go around, ride bikes to the missions, ride it along the Riverwalk. You know, so you're getting a little bit of the old and the new, and a really nice combination. Right, I didn't think about the bikes along the Riverwalk missions. Yeah, you can. You can, uh, you can bike it. I think it's a little over two miles to bike along the river walks to the four missions. Do you like doing that? Yeah. Yeah? What about the ghost tours? Do any of you like that? I've never done that, but I love all the ghost stuff, like ghost adventures. So that's a good teenage thing to do, right? Yeah, that's a good teenage thing to do. Thanks so much. This Thank is great. You. Have fun. Have fun okay. in San Antonio. Teenagers love San Antonio, which is awesome. Hard Thank to please you. teenagers, right? <laughs> to complete my trip to San Antonio, we headed just outside the city limits to experience a true Texas pastime. The sounds of bull riding and the smell of barbecue fills the air. We want to welcome you to Chaos Rodeo in Bullard, Texas. We're going to a true Texas rodeo. Welcome to the Rodeo San Antonio style. Isn't this what all cowboys do? They just hang out and hang out and hang out in the sun. I think I'm going to take a nap. Or maybe I'll just check out the rodeo. This is Tejas Rodeo, a hidden gem on the north side of San Antonio. And this place is one of the ways that the locals spend a night out with the family. Here, you'll get a front row seat to all the action. Bull riding, barrel racing, it's something I've never seen before. I can't get over this. Another great activity the kids can do, mechanical bull riding. You can try your luck in a mechanical bowl. It's only one minute, but it feels like a lifetime. <laughs> As the rodeo wrapped up, we pulled aside a true Texas family to talk about their rodeo traditions. You know, I love meeting families at the rodeo. What's this like for families here? It's just a family event from start to finish. It's for everything. You know, our, we have a 10-year-old and a 2-year-old, and they all love to come out here because there's mutton busting, there's calf scramble for him. We get the rope and participate too. You're real family friendly then? Oh, yeah. yeah. So what are some things that the kids like? What do you like to do here? Uh, I like to rope the dummy and ride the bull. So is this a good thing to do on a Saturday night? Yes, ma'am. I love that. That's so cool. What is the history of Texas and the rodeo? Why is it so important? 
I mean, Texas is known for cowboys and rodeo, and it's just something that we know and we enjoy, and we do it as a family. You're starting young right here, right? Yeah. She looks very comfortable on the horse right there. Yes. <laughs> she wakes up every morning wondering where the horses are. Oh, it's like a giant toy, I think. <laughs> But a great ending to a wonderful vacation in San Antonio. If I was a kid, I would love this. A city with culture, history, and of course, true Texas fun. I'm Colleen Kelly. Thanks for watching Family Travel. We'll see you next time. Funding provided by... Kids think travel's all about fun, but parents know it broadens horizons, introduces kids to new cultures, and makes lasting memories. And that's pretty awesome. Family travel equals family fun. City Pass. For more information on upcoming destinations and projects, visit FamilyTravelCK.com. Follow us on Twitter and find us on Facebook. We love to hear from you.